Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks once again for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm your I'll just Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first uh, on the hazardous weather graphic, uh, not really much going on. There is a high surf advisory out for the uh, north coast of St. Lawrence Island and actually on back up toward uh, Teller and also Point Hope, or not Point Hope, but up toward Teller there through the Bering Strait, Tin City and those areas, Wales, uh, for uh, high surf, uh, possibly causing some minor beach erosion. And that's out for tonight and probably through Saturday as well, possibly even longer. Otherwise, satellite imagery showing low pressure here, cold low pressure, slowly pulling southward as the center got a little farther to the south, those winds uh, kicked up to about 45 miles an hour in gusts there across St. Lawrence Island, back into the Bering Strait, Cape Lisburn, northeast gust 35, Mater of the Arctic coast up there seeing east-northeast uh, 15 to 30 miles per hour. Uh, areas of light snow here and snow showers from uh, actually in the northwest there, uh, no attack Valley, Kotzebue Sound, back into the uh, Susitna Valley, or I'm sorry, the Kuskokwim Valley today. Susitna Valley pretty clear uh, throughout the day today, but areas of light snow, McGrath, Sleep Mute, uh, tapered off during the afternoon hours. You see some clearing back here over the Yukon Delta and down to, uh, well, Bethel on out to possibly the coastline, northern Bristol Basin, some clearing. Snow showers, Pribilof Islands again, and uh, rain as this system slowly moves southward bringing, uh, still catching some rain here from the western Alaska Peninsula on into the eastern Aleutians. And showers continue to fall across the southeast coast today with uh, uh, Angoon picking up a little over half an inch in a 12-hour period ending uh, Friday afternoon. While Juneau had about a quarter of an inch, Sitka picked up a third of an inch. And so that's uh, not real heavy, but more of a showery nature. Rain and snow showers up along the eastern North Gulf Coast area. Isolated flurries, snow showers, or just areas of very light snow over the Wrangell Mountains, Eastern Copper River Basin. Kind of hit and miss up across the 40 mile country, central Tanana Valley, on up uh, toward Eagle River with clearing here, the central interior sunshine across south central Alaska and Cook Inlet, as well as uh, most of Prince William Sound, starting to see some clouds begin to increase on the uh, chart today, starting to work their way up toward the southern Prince William Sound area, getting over to the coast of the Kenai Peninsula. Also here, building clouds there just uh, off the coast of Kodiak. Again, showers southeast coast there, and uh, rain and snow showers along the North Gulf Coast. Otherwise, the sunny skies here over south central Alaska into the interior. This low 988 millibars there, drifting down across Norton Sound uh, early afternoon on Friday. Snow showers is uh, pretty isolated here down toward Cusquam Bay and Novak Island. Get a little more extensive up toward, the, of course, the uh, main low center there. Seward Peninsula, Nome seeing snow up into Kotzebue Sound. Areas of light snow there for the uh, central Arctic coast back off to the east. And then also possible flurries, as I mentioned here, over the eastern interior, but nothing significant. And back out to the west, uh, northerly flow from the Arctic across the Russian Far East, pulling cold air southward on the back side of this system here. Here's another surge of cold air as those northerly winds increase back to the north of that. That whole thing will be shifting southward. So look for those snowfall levels to start to drop to sea level, even down toward the Aleutians here later tonight and into the day Saturday, as well as the uh, uh, Fox Islands here to the Alaska Peninsula as colder air finally spreads on down to the south. For tonight, uh, that'll begin to happen, but the showers may let up a little bit there. Just scattered rain and snow showers on Alaska Nikolsky out to Adak and Atka with the uh, snow showers a little more vigorous up across the Pribilof Islands. Another trough swinging down. 
This low center uh, kind of hanging up there near Unalakleet or right along the uh, northern Yukon Delta coast. Areas of snow pretty widespread with the gusty winds, uh, but amounts will be on the light side here up through the Bering Strait from Nunavak Island. Snow showers now pushing down to the Alaska Peninsula, staying fair over the interior and cold. Temperatures again anywhere from 10 to 20 below in the clear areas, otherwise uh, warmer where it's cloudier. There are central Tanana Valley uh, down into the, Cop or the uh, Prince William Sound area. Again, those snow showers on the increase. Some of that moisture probably working into western Prince William Sound late tonight into early tomorrow morning for snow from Portage possibly as far west as uh, maybe some light stuff might get into the Alieska area, more likely though Portage, and rain over the northern Panhandle. Uh, early on, that'll be rain, that'll begin to end tomorrow afternoon as we see the next system tomorrow pulls northward here. Winds becoming gale force here along the coast, central or south coast, working to the central coast tomorrow. Rain, moderate, possibly heavy at times as that front swings up across Dixon Entrance. Dry in the north, though, a little bit of a break here ahead of the system coming in. And uh, variably cloudy, Copper River Basin, a few flurries. Look for more clouds, Cook Inlet, especially northern Cook Inlet, up into the valleys, but should stay dry, maybe some light snow flurries developing along the Chugach Mountains. Back to the west here with the main upper level low. We've got uh, lots of snow showers going on here across the southwest coast, uh, locally inland, becoming just flurries, Cuscombe Valley, maybe to the Alaska Range. Snow showers now, or Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, rain and snow showers for the uh, eastern Aleutians, all the way out to Shimia. Snow showers continue, northwest winds 10 to 20 for the Pervilofs, and then still on those gusty winds there for St. Lawrence Island. Outlook for Sunday, winds let up, this trough drifts westward, tighter gradient now over the Russian Far East, South-north flow, strongest now, back to the west. So snow showers down to Atka, rain and snow showers tapering off out to the west. Areas of light snow, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, still along the southwest coast, Nunavak Island, areas of snow here in advance of this trough across Bristol Bay up into the southern Cuscombe Valley, maybe even pushing into Kodiak Island. Mostly sunny, clouds uh, decrease again after that uh, one minor shot of snow possibility uh, tonight into early tomorrow, uh, the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, back into fair skies and some snow showers over the uh, eastern interior, more showers, so the panhandle. Lows for tonight, again, um, as low as 10, 15, maybe even 20 degrees below zero in the colder areas up here where the skies are clear and the winds are light. Otherwise, uh, either side of zero into the Tanana Valley, and again, lows tonight uh, anywhere from 5 to 20 above south of the Alaska Range. Lower 20s here, southwest interior to up mid to upper 20s, uh, Nunavak Island to St. Lawrence Island in the mid to upper 30s of the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, single numbers, Brooks Range, eastern Arctic coast, otherwise in the 20s on the western Arctic coast. Teens to lower 20s over the Tanana Valley, lower to mid 30s, south central Alaska, lower 40s, Kodiak, upper 40s, Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow, or lows tomorrow night, uh, dropping below zero again, uh, but maybe not quite as far here in the interior, mostly staying above zero, with uh, teens to upper 20s. Looks a little milder now for south central Alaska, especially Cook Inlet, but uh, Cordova still dropping down to 31 degrees, 35 to 40 for the panhandle. Highs in the Sunday afternoon, coldest in the north, warmest in the south, with uh, no change for the Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Starting with uh, flying weather, moving into flying weather here. A pretty good VFR tomorrow morning from the north slope here right on down to the uh, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island. Marginal VFR right along or off the coast there, Kodiak on down south of the peninsula. Areas of marginal VFR scattered across uh, the Bering Sea and uh, even more so over the Aleutians with some uh, IFR in the Yukon Delta coast, a little bit up here over the western Arctic coast. Otherwise, marginal VFR uh, starting out up over the northern panhandle, westward Cape Yakutaga to about Cordova. And then for uh, tomorrow afternoon, we've got moisture moving northward here. So ahead of that, this area clears out and becomes VFR, IFR showing up down south now. Pretty good VFR of North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, a swath of marginal VFR, Barren Islands, Fognac Island, 
uh, down to possibly near Chiniac and Marmot Bays, VFR Central Eastern Interior, Eastern Arctic Coast, a little bit of marginal stuff on the west side there. And then marginal VFR now a little more widespread over the northern bearing on down into Bristol Bay with IFR over the Alaska Peninsula. And then for uh, Sunday morning, good VFR continues here over much of the interior. More marginal VFR with very little IFR out over the Bering Sea with uh, VFR for the Fox Islands and the Arctic Coast as well, except on the west side around Point Lay. IFR persisting here over the southern panhandle. And for Sunday afternoon, marginal VFR, Dixon entrance right up into the north there, uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, good VFR, Gulf of Alaska, South Central, Copper River Basin, area marginal stuff, a possible IFR there up over the uh, southern slopes there, the Brooks Range in about that area, otherwise VFR back to the west till you get out here to the southwest, some marginal, back to VFR, more widespread uh, marginal VFR out over the eastern Bering Sea and still uh, VFR there for Adak Island. And for Anatovic VFR, same forecast for Adigan, good VFR tomorrow. Lake Clark, Merrill, rainy, windy, uh, even the eastern range there, Isabel, Mentasta, all VFR. Same thing for Tanita. And now Portage, though, st could start out IFR, some moisture sneaking up into western Prince William Sound, but that'll give way to VFR in the afternoon. Chilkoot and White, marginal to start with, but the next moisture batch moves northward. Things will become VFR until probably evening. And then for the uh, freezing levels at the surface here, Nunavak Island, just north of St. Matthew, down across uh, to near Shelikoff Strait, up along the coast and into the Panhandle, 2,000 feet up. That next system beginning to pull some warmer air up, uh, especially tomorrow in along the southern southeast coast. Icing could be some... Uh, Mixed type icing here, possibly above about 3,000 feet, eastern Aleutians over to near Cold Bay, southwest coast here up to St. Lawrence Island. Uh, more so widespread rime icing possible here, uh, widespread light rime icing, maybe a little bit of isolated moderate mixed in too. That'll all be advancing northward, above about 5,000 feet. And the jet stream here. Associated with that next storm, main jet well to the south here, upper level low west of the Queen Charlotte's, but you can see a very strong jet uh, cutting in into Washington State, and that upper level low, cold upper low continues here, slowly pulling southward, but still near the uh, Seward Peninsula. So we've got cold northerly flow across the Bering Sea, 70 knots way out there to the west. And taking a look at the 9,000 foot wind flow chart, you can see this. Uh, uh, low reflected at 9,000 feet also here slowly sliding southward near Amonic tomorrow afternoon and uh, winds lightening up here along the Arctic coast uh, north slope Brooks Range just uh, south southeast at about 5 knots maybe 15 along the eastern coast 20 increasing 35 knots from the Bering Strait on down across uh, St. Lawrence Island north northwest 25 to 35 for the uh, southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians and 30 to 35 knot winds here with that next system coming up, even stronger at 3,000 feet. Got a 50 knot wind max here right along the central coast midday tomorrow, otherwise pretty light back along the North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island. Very light winds over the interior areas. 20, 30 coming out of the northwest up to, uh, well, 15 to 25, not as strong at 9,000 as they are at 3,000. Moving on to turbulence. Uh, with those uh, gusty north winds, probably the western part of St. Lawrence Island will be bumpier than the east side. Occasional moderate chop there below 4,000 feet, as well as the Alaska Peninsula Eastern Aleutians spotty out over, and then more moderate turbulence with increasing wind in the panhandle. Emergency responders continue to address environmental impacts from the 800-foot container ship aground on Elbow Reef in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Every year, NOAA responds to thousands of natural and human-induced incidents threatening life, property, and natural resources. During such incidents, NOAA is mandated to protect natural resources, provide weather data, and chart navigable waterways. To better fulfill this mission, NOAA conducted the first Safe Sanctuaries exercise in April of 2005. 
to bring together NOAA resources and expertise with other agencies for a hypothetical oil spill in the Florida Keys National Marine Just Sanctuary. Quickly, uh, briefly, the situation is, uh, as we know, the Yimby uh, Fourth of Trader uh, went aground on the elbow. Uh, it's, uh, it's currently leaking fuel, and there's also a secondary release. The elbow is an outlying reef in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. This marine protected area is one of 13 marine sanctuaries and one coral reef ecosystem reserve in the United States. The Florida Keys is the nation's only living barrier coral reef. This exercise highlights NOAA's finest in emergency response and demonstrates its wide array of assets and capabilities. What? Under the Oil Pollution Act, the U.S. Coast Guard assumes the lead authority to direct an emergency response in the marine environment as the federal on-scene coordinator. In a significant incident such as this, the on-scene coordinator calls upon a cadre of specialists from around the country and assembles them in an incident command post, in this case, the Monroe County Emergency Response Center. Key among them is NOAA's scientific support coordinator, who serves as a science advisor to the on-scene coordinator. For this exercise, the NOAA coordinator leads the environmental unit that will orchestrate the delivery of data and observations acquired from NOAA scientists and others. Among the initial information needed for the response is figuring out where the leaking oil is headed. The scientific support coordinator dispatches an oceanographer to make real-time observations of ocean currents and oil movement at the grounding site. She does this by dropping biodegradable dye pellets from the helicopter and photographs the dispersal of the dye. This green dye mimics oil and gives the oceanographer an accurate view of sea surface currents. When she returns, she immediately reports the information to the scientific support coordinator in the incident command post. They combine these observations with others in the environmental unit who have been working around the clock to respond to the oil spill. Uh, there's this eddy right here. As soon as the spill was reported, the scientific support coordinator also requested a team from the Center for Operational Oceanographic Products and Services. Working with the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary staff, they assembled and deployed a quick response buoy to collect real-time data at the wreck site. Using sound waves, this acoustic Doppler current profiling package measures ocean currents throughout the water column and transmits that information via satellite and radio straight into the command post. Other team members monitor a pair of surface current mapper stations that were installed along the coast. These towers broadcast and receive high frequency radio waves along the sea surface and provide another measurement of the surface currents but on a wider scale. Process signals are also uplinked by a satellite to the command post. The data from the surface current stations and current profiling buoy are verified with the aerial observations made on site by the oceanographer. Anything that would indicate that, but I'm trying to think of would I have seen it if it was there. It might have been the water so clear. But more data are available and needed. The oceanographer also teams up with a meteorologist from the National Weather Service. He is a warning coordination meteorologist, and hourly he receives two critical updates on weather forecasts. One comes from NOAA's weather forecast office in Key West. Unlike yesterday with the true east direction that we might have expected, it looks like uh, the models are indicating that it might be more of an east-northeast by uh, early afternoon hours. These are the local experts who understand the daily weather patterns in the Florida Keys and can make the most sense out of the information coming from NOAA satellites, radar, and their own observations. During a sensitive event such as an oil spill, the Key West office also dispatches an incident meteorologist dedicated to monitoring the weather specifically on the wreck site. 
With assistance from the sanctuary, the incident meteorologist installed a real-time monitoring system on the nearest accessible platform to the grounding site. This instrument transmits real-time observations of wind speed, wind direction, and temperature back to a small satellite dish that was set up in the field operations center in Key Largo. With the most current data and frequent observations, the incident meteorologist prepares the second source of updates for the warning coordination meteorologist in the command post. I have a uh, forecast here ready to go. That's what I was just coordinating with the um with your office there, and I can go ahead and send that to you in the next 10, 15 minutes. Integrating all the field data, the meteorologist presents the most current forecast back to the environmental unit. With all the real-time information now in hand, the scientific support coordinator and oceanographer contact NOAA's scientific support team in Seattle, Washington. Hey, Tom. This is Debbie and Brad and Matt here. Hey there. Hey there. Hey, Bushy. Bushy. Mark Miller, CJ, and Bushy here on the Warrow. At the vessel site, we did a die drop, and the currents were about six tenths, seven tenths of a knot to the north. The team in Seattle will now work quickly to compile all the available data in computer programs and build a trajectory model for where the oil is expected to go. At least twice per day, the Seattle team updates the trajectory model. This critical information is faxed to the command post and delivered immediately to the scientific support coordinator. Whenever there is new information available, the scientific support coordinator and other NOAA specialists brief the unified command. The unified command is the lead group in the command post, composed of the sanctuary manager, the state and federal on-scene coordinators, and the responsible party for the ship grounding. The Unified Command and the Planning Unit will use the latest trajectory model and other information to best direct the course of field operations for the response. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, sea ice analysis for uh, Friday showing uh, still thickening ice here along the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, now extending down into and across Mackenzie River Delta. This whole area advancing slowly south and southwest and uh, still uh, ice not as uh, quick to form here along the west side due to those uh, easterly winds. And moving on to coastal water forecast storm warnings as that next storm comes up in the forecast southern coast there southeast 50 knots east 45 knots central coast gales up to the north coast back up through here, coming down below gale force, uh, 30 knots, 10 foot seas, northeast winds, central northern panhandle there, inside waters, gusts of 35 knots there, and then southeast 30 for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Sunday, westerly winds, 30 knots here on the central and south coast, small craft advisories, 25 knot winds, west southwest, north coast, Lynn Canal, south 25 knots, higher gusts, south 20, Knots for Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait, small craft advisories. Prince William Sound, northeast 15 tomorrow, otherwise east 20 for the North Gulf Coast, turning northeast on the west side. Northwest at just 15 here for the Barren Islands. Northerly is 20 knots, uh, Kachemak Bay, southern Cook Inlet, north 15, north of the Forelands. And then for Sunday, uh, becoming more variable to actually southwest at about 10. For all the Cook Inlet, west winds coming down to 10 knots, Kachemak Bay. 20 knot winds for the Barren Islands and the North Gulf Coast, northwest at 10. For Prince William Sound, seas down to two feet, but uh, running eight feet here, so small craft advisories continue for the North Gulf Coast and Barren Islands. Kodiak Island, uh, north winds 20 knots, uh, seas five to seven feet, about sums it up there. Sitkanak to uh, Castle Cape, north 20, small craft advisory south of Castle Cape. Small crafts also on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Bristol Bay, though, pretty light winds west at 10. Sunday's outlook, those pick up southwest 20, 5-foot seas there for Bristol Bay, west 20 knots, 7-foot seas for the Alaska Peninsula, and southwesterlies at 20 knots from Castle Cape to Sitkanak. Kodiak, uh, southwest 20 there on the east side, 8-foot seas, uh, uh, much lighter conditions there for Shelikoff Strait. And for the uh, Fox Islands, west to northwest winds, 20 to 25 knots, seas running 9 to 12 feet in those areas tomorrow. Northwest 25, small craft advisors Adak and Atka, 9 to 10 foot seas, 10 foot seas and 30 knot winds from the northwest for the western zones. And for Sunday, northwest 30 knots here for the western Aleutians, 
12 to 13 feet. Same thing for the central Aleutians, pretty uniform wind pattern there, but coming down, holding the same direction, northwest, coming down to 15 to 20 for the Fox Island, sea subsiding to 5 to 7 feet on Alaska Island. And for the uh, southwest coast, winds northwest, strongest north of Nunavak Island, 25 knots, 9 foot seas, gales, St. Lawrence Island, uh, north 35 knots with 11 foot seas, coming down to 30 there for St. Matthew, diminishing to 20 for the Pervilofs. And no change for Sunday, northwest 28 foot seas there for St. Paul, St. George, northwest 20 along the coast, 7 foot seas, small craft advisories, northern Bering, all the way up to the Bering Strait. And for the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow, pretty light uh, wind south to southwest, 10 to 15 knots. Otherwise, east 20, central coast, small craft advisories for the west side, all the way down to the Bering Strait. North to northeast winds, uh, 25 knots, 7 to 8 foot seas. And then for Sunday, east 15, coming down uh, again, all going easterly here even for the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, 10 to 15 knots, he's coming down to three feet. And looking at tonight's forecast again, uh, generally fair here over the interior with clearing areas. Uh, that'll be the coldest zones, 15 to 20 below there in these clear areas. Uh, look for clouds increase, snow showers increase, Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula tonight, uh, North Gulf Coast. Showers, mostly uh, this batch sort of shifting off to the north, the next system coming in. Again, storm force winds on the south coast tomorrow morning with that system until the front goes through, wind and rain working northward throughout the day. Snow showers, especially early on, Prince William Sound, Portage, maybe as far west as uh, Girdwood, Kenai Peninsula, nothing to the north. Snow showers back out to the west continue. No change for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Outlook for Sunday, chance of snow here, Bristol Bay and snow showers out over the Bering Sea to the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, not much change over the interior. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.